Hello everyone, my name is Eleanor Duvetter. I'm a forecaster with the National Wildlife Service down in El Paso, Texas. And in this presentation, we're gonna give a nice overview of the main graphical user interface or GUI of Forecast Builder. So let's dive in. In this presentation, we're gonna go over the interface itself. We'll hit on some navigation tips and tricks. We'll define a custom time range or edit area. This can come in handy if you're trying to add some more detail into your forecast. We'll go over the steps with a little bit more detail and parse out some of the icons. We'll hit on the status window display and how it can be helpful for potentially troubleshooting or seeing if forecast builder is hung up on something. And lastly, we will select a time range, which is the first step in the forecast builder process. All right, so here is the interface of Forecast Builder. We're gonna hit on some buttons here and we'll start, start at the top left. On the sidebar on the left-hand side, you see that every step of Forecast Builder has an icon and is from the top to the bottom listed out. So the steps are as follows. Select a time range, populate, analyze, adjust, integrity, precip type, precip acume, non-precipitation, aviation, weather grids, fire weather, and publish grids. Below all of your steps and the icons, you see there are two arrows facing into each other, and this button allows you to expand or contract the GUI. Down at the bottom, we have our navigation steps. So you can see there's a previous and skip. These allow you to go to the previous skip, step or skip to the next step. If you go the previous and skip route, you won't actually run whatever step you're on. To run, save, and continue the step you're on, simply select the green save and continue button. In an any step along the process, you'll always have the option to exit Forecast Builder with this red button. Below our navigation buttons, we have what is called the status bar, and this will expand and contract based on what Forecast Builder is doing in the background, and it'll actually tell you every step or calculation or thing that it is doing, which can be very helpful. In this dashed blue box here, we have more of the meat of our step. So this is gonna be where you see your various tools or ability to create whatever grids, um, or maybe even instructions on what to do for the step. So for example, this is the analyzed, analyze adjust step, and we have some tools here to help us with analyzing our base grids. Lastly, up at the top, we have a readout of the current step that we're on, as well as the time range that we set in the first step. All right, to dive a little bit more into some of the navigation and colors, so you can see our sidebar here that says all of the steps can actually expand to show you the names of each step, and those steps are colored with different colors. Green means the step is successfully finished, Yellow means the step is currently running. Black means the step is not completed yet. Red means the step has inconsistencies or other problems. Gray means the step will be skipped. And blue means the step will be auto-run. To get to the more named out options for each step, you can simply slide out this part by hovering your mouse over the icons. These three dots that you see for each step will give you the option to toggle auto run and skip and that'll be honored for your instance of forecast builder. So say you know you run into an issue where you don't need your winter precip type accumulation step, then you can simply just click and toggle between auto run or skip and that step for your instance will be skipped. So it won't impact your neighbors or your other the other times that you start forecast builder. Next, we'll go into defining a custom time range or edit area. You'll come across situations where you'll need to define a separate edit area or time range than the default that Forecast Builder has. So the defaulted area is going to be what your ITO or AWIPS focal point has set, and it's usually the whole CWA or a little bit bigger. The default time range is going to be what you set in the first step of setting your time range and you can always see what the default is up at the top here. To select a custom one for a specific step, you have the option to hit edit area or time range down here with use custom GFE, and that will honor whatever is highlighted in your GFE. 
So if you have a specific time range that's highlighted or edit area, it will only run the tool or that, that specific step for your specific edit area or time range highlighted in GFE. It's recommended that you run over the full domain first and then come back and overwrite with the detail or the specifics um, using the custom edit area or time range. Now we're going to dive a little bit more into the specific steps and we'll put some more detail with them. So first things first, you're going to define your time range that is going to be used through the forecast builder process. Next, you're going to populate your base grids. And usually this is with the MBM. It'll vary from grid to grid and office to office. Then you're going to edit your base grids with the analyze adjust step. Next, you're going to apply consistency checks and create the derived grids from those base grids with the integrity step. Next, these next three steps, you kind of build up your weather grids. So precip type, you're going to create and edit your unconditional precip weather grid types. Next, the precip accum, you're going to create your winter precipitation accumulation grids, so snow, sleet, ice. Next, your non-precipitation weather grids, so dust, smoke, fog, you're going to create all of those. Next, you're going to skip into this aviation step, which basically just loads in some or calculates some of the derived aviation grids. This will vary on your local office settings. In this next weather step, you're going to take all of the parts of your weather grids and assimilate them together. Next, in fire weather, you're going to create or load in your fire weather grids, and this is another one that varies on your local office settings. And lastly, you will publish your grids. One helpful thing that Forecast Builder does is have the status window display. So down at the bottom where the arrow is pointing, you can see that Forecast Builder is actually telling the user what calculations it's doing in the background. This can be very helpful if you're trying to verify that Forecast Builder is doing the exact calculations that you selected or want to be done. And if an error occurs, you can see where Forecast Builder seems to be hung up. All right, let's get into the first step of Forecast Builder. Let's select our time range. So to do that, Forecast Builder will open to this first step, and you want to define the start and then the beginning of your forecast period. You can select from one of the predefined time options. This is usually by period. Or you can do a highlighted time range in GFE, and you can simply just click the highlighted time range options for either the start and or both. So after you define when your forecast starts and ends, you can verify to see that your time range is correct by checking up at the top here and seeing what it has listed just to make sure that it's correct. And that is your overview of the main GUI of Forecast Builder. If you have any questions, please feel free to email the email address on the screen. Thank you from all of us and happy forecasting!